So the inverse of a matrix is a similar idea to the inverse or reciprocal of a number. Except zero, of course, because zero does not have a reciprocal. So any number multiplied by its inverse or reciprocal would result in the multiplicative identity. So say, for example, the number six. If you were to multiply the number six by its reciprocal, what's the reciprocal of six? There it is. One over, well, remember, six is six over one. You know? So the reciprocal is one over six. So you'll get the multiplicative identity, which is one. Likewise, if you have a number two over five, times its reciprocal or inverse, you end up getting one. All right, so in the same way with ma in matrix theory, if you multiply any matrix by its inverse, which is represented by A, minus one here, then the result is the identity, the equivalent of one in number theory. All right, so you see my idea. So a matrix M, times its inverse, M inverse, gives you I, the identity matrix. Now, now we want to look at how we calculate the inverse of a matrix. And these are, use the formula here. The inverse of a matrix is 1 over the determinant of A times the adjoint of A. All right, in previous videos, we look at how we calculate both determinant and adjoint. So if you have a matrix A, let's say the matrix A is 4, 5, 2, 7. And we're asked to find A inverse. Then A inverse is equal to 1 over the determinant. Remember how we calculate determinant? Determinant, remember, we cross multiply. So 4 times 5, that's what, 20? 4 5 is 20. Minus 7 times 2, 14. So it's 1 over the determinant. So the, ter the determinant is 20 minus 14, which is 6. So the inverse is 1 over that. All right? Times the adjoint. And what's the adjoint? The adjoint is, remember... Leading diagonal, elements switch places. And for the other diagonal, the elements change their signs. Hence, the inverse for A here would be 1 over 6 times, so 1 over, one over the adjoint. And the adjoint was 6, right? The adjoint was 20. Minus 14, which is 6, so 1 over that. And then we have the, we have the adjugate or the adjoint. Now usually we leave our answer like this. Because if you should, if you should multiply each term in the bracket here by 6. In other words, if you should divide each term by 6, then what you'll end up with is some Ridiculous decimals, which we don't want. So we normally, if if we don't divide out neatly, we now just leave the answer in that form. Suppose we have a, a matrix like that, B equal to two one H three, and we are asked to find the inverse of B. Then let's find let's find the determinant of B first. Let's find the determinant of B. The determinant of B would be 2 times 3, which is 6. Take away 1 times that, take away 8, right? So the determinant of B would be minus 2. So the formula for the inverse, it's a B inverse, and it's always this, 1 over the determinant of B times the adjoint of B. So 1 over the determinant, which is minus 2, times the adjoint, let's find the adjoint, the adjoint, we switch elements in the first diagonal, so we get 3 and we get 2, and then this one, let's change sign, so minus 1, minus 8, so no, absolutely nothing difficult about finding the inverse, let's do another one. We 
before I do before I do the other one let's 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 test if we multiply b times b inverse if we get the identity matrix let me just rewrite b inverse let me just multiply each term by minus half and then multiplying by 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 negative a half is the same thing as dividing by two right so so a half times three which is three the three divided by two is as negative one point five and then negative eight divided by negative two that's four or you want to say half time, minus half times minus eight and then this is minus one and then this would be minus half times minus one that's positive half right let's do a multiplication and see if we get the identity matrix let's work multiply b times b inverse Now B, 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 B is which matrix? 2, 1, A, 3. And A is minus 1.5, 0 0.5, 4, and minus 1. That's the calculation now. So remember how this thing works, row by row. All right. Column, row by column, sorry, and then uh, we'll always row by column, right? So you multiply the top row by this, this, the first column here, right? So, it's minus 1.5, good? So, what's 2 times minus 1.5? That's negative 3, right? And then 1 times 4, so it's negative 3 plus 4. So let's apply the 2, 1 now to 0 0.5, negative 1. What's 2 times 0.5? 1. And then the 1 times minus 1, just minus 1. Let's multiply the A3 now times these elements in the first column. So A times negative 1.5, that's negative 12. Plus 3 times 4, that's positive 12. And then over here now, you're applying a3 to 0.5 minus 1. So a times 0.5, that's 4. And then 3 times 0.1, that's minus 3. See so what you end up with? What's negative 3 plus 4? Negative 3 plus 4. Is positive 1. 1 minus 1, that's 0. Alright. And this is, this is which, which one now? Negative 12 plus 12. So it's, this was plus 12. Negative 12 plus 12, that's 0. And then 4 minus 3, that's 1. So we end up with the identity matrix. Alright. So we are confident that, that this matrix here, is the inverse of B because when I multiply B times B inverse you get what we call the identity matrix or is we related to the number one in number theory you multiply any number by the identity matrix the value does not change just as our number times its reciprocal or its inverse give you one a matrix times its reciprocal or its inverse well we don't say reciprocal we just say inverse right give you the equivalent of one which we call i in matrix theory so i in matrix theory is equivalent to one in normal theory